Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Herb Curse Con Day 2. I'm here with two incredible people. I'm very excited to get to know a little bit better. We have with us Tamara Duarte and Varun Saranga. Good morning, guys. Hello, good morning. We were just talking morning. about our collective need for coffee. I hope you guys are ready. I'll take it easy on you, I promise. Oh, my God, please do. <laughs> also at the same time. Cheers, Cheers. 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 Hello. <laughs> so, so far, uh, you guys have uh, been on calls, right? How have they been going for either of you to answer? Please. Um, it's been so refreshing. It's so wonderful seeing the same faces, uh, seeing faces that I've seen in the past at different conventions, and seeing new people. Um, it's just so, so amazing that you can, with this technology and how COVID is, it's just like, you're talking to people who are like in Belgium on a patio drinking <laughs> or like, you know, you get to like see their world and, uh, and, and you, it's really interesting. It's just because of, you know, our, what we're going through right now. It's like what the climate is, where they are and being able to speak to people like real people, as opposed to like seeing it on the news or kind of getting hearsay of what's going on in different countries. It's like really cool to see where like different countries are at right now. Um, yeah, it's, I, 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 I love it. I love, I love with all the herbers. No, Sorry, I, I, went agree. I mean, I love <laughs> to see where people call from. Like I had one fan call from, uh, they were about to go on a dive, like in the ocean. <laughs> Calling what? that was like in the last convention. But here, there was another herper who was on a farm, and then she showed me her goats in a group call. It was hilarious. Like, oh there's my just, gosh, there's there's fun fun calls when you get to like peer into people's lives in these calls, which is kind of nice. It's a different kind of a experience. Yeah, it's it's little snapshots yeah. into people's existence, right? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And you don't get that at real, like, yes, you get to see that person in, in person, but it's so wonderful to be able to be like, this is where I live and this is my environment. And like, yeah, I, I, I find that really cool. The snapshots of people's lives. And we kind of got a yeah. mm, sort of a pandemic plus up as it were in terms of herpers. Um, the coffers are filling because of people being at home and being able to kind of binge and, and kind of get involved with shows they maybe didn't have the time for before. So if nothing else, you know, small blessings, right? Oh my gosh, yeah, so mm -hmm. many new fans. Mm -hmm. So many new people I've met this time around, it's crazy. It's a good thing, it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, so my first question is gonna be for you, Varun. Uh, the trials and tribulations Jeremy went through in season four was both heartbreaking and hopeful. What was your reaction to Robin's unfortunate fate, knowing the emotional toll it would take on your character, uh, which you'd have to go through? How'd you prepare? First off, did you write these questions? Wow, so well written, that, that oh. question. Right Thank you. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> it was so it goes awesome. down from here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was the trials and tribulations Jeremy went through with the Robin experience? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was, we kind of had a general idea about what was going to happen. Like we had the convention in uh, New Orleans and then uh, Robin was there, it was uh, Justin, sorry. And we were chatting about it and Emily was telling us like, so Robin forgets and then they'll find each other at the end and all these things. But then COVID hit and it really changed Jeremy's outlook on relationships and gave him a much darker or maybe a more realistic and an unrealistic way expectations mm -hmm. of a relationship like sometimes your first loves don't work out in fact most of the time he just had a most a more extreme case of it but I think through that he learned to really become a better person like he understands what heartbreak does to a person and how it can allow you to grow so it was I, I kind of really loved that they didn't get together because it made him a, a more whole person and then now with Damon I think you'll have a healthier outlook on how to have a good relationship. What a great answer. That's so accurate, right? You got that realism and Jeremy's always been that optimist. We got that realism, but he also has a new face. So very right. Irish, not real. It's, it is Winona Earp. I mean, what, <laughs> so, so much we can do on the uh, realistic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Tamara, I'm gonna ask you a question about Rosita, um, who is one of my favorite characters. Let me just get that out of the way. I absolutely love everything about her. 
good, bad, or indifferent. Um, she's a survivor and a fighter, unabashedly strong and smart. She's mentioned more than once that she is an actual genius, so put some respect on her name. Uh, she doesn't hide her light under a bushel. What was it like for you to portray somebody who is such a nuanced, multidimensional character? She's got, uh, she's beautiful, smart, resilient, capable all at once. We don't get that a lot in TV for females, especially. Uh, yes, I, I think that it's not as dimensional on a, on a regular basis. When, when I'm watching television shows, it's either you're this or you're that. Um, to be honest, it was kind of easy because I didn't have to be this or that. I could be all, everything. And it was very much a relief in that sense um, where I'm like, oh, I don't have to be like that really sexy thing or like, I don't have to be like this nerdy, like I could do both. And I feel like that took a lot of weight off my shoulders because mm it's so realistic like it's a it's a it's a common thing in actual real women life. in oh, actual yeah. life and <laughs> women can be both <laughs> it's, so um yeah it was uh I, I loved it I loved being able to uh bring in and even even her being um you know not human and like all of these other layers uh which really helped me uh, understand the character more. I think that, yeah, it, to, to answer your question really simply, I think it was an easy thing to do because it's a real thing that ha re real women can be all of these things and are all of these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. I love that answer. Thank you. It's, it's <laughs> nice to put that out there. And hopefully in the future, uh, I'm, I've said before, you know, I think that um, Winona is walking so other shows can run the same way other shows have done that for Winona. So I'm hoping that there'll be more of those non one dimensional characters in the future that we can all enjoy. Yeah. Um, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Varun, at the uh, end of season four, Jeremy got a phone call. This incredibly sexy voice on the other end of the line informed him he'd been promoted to deputy chief of Black Badge. What kind of boss do you think Jeremy will be considering how he's grown so much and really come into his own over three seasons? I think he'll be a really effective boss like I think Black Badge always dropped the ball on a lot of things or kept a lot of secrets and never prioritized helping people just like trying to forward their organization so it's like I think the first thing on the docket is to find out what Eve is up to you know like there there has to be somebody like trying to determine how to protect the Ghost River Triangle instead of just protecting their own interests. So yeah, I think he would definitely be a really good leader. I think he'd be in over his head a lot. I would have loved to see how he did, like how he would handle all the pressure of being the boss. Cause you know, he's not like the most authoritative but you saw hints of it when he like poisoned his boss which is a very, <laughs> he's willing so, to like, go very far to protect yeah. people. I don't know, maybe there's, some gray there but once uh, he gets there he gets there but it yeah, just takes really, longer <laughs> he almost killed this guy he's an allergy it's horrible um but yeah no i think he would be a really effective boss and actually would care about the people's well-being versus how black badge acted in the past like the first stage of black badge was so underground and their secrets had secrets and then the second stage was incompetent so hopefully he steers the ship in the right direction do you think they'll have like some sort of demon intern program? <laughs> like, oh my God. Integrate. That's true. That's a great one. That would be good. Don't you want to see a Rosita there working for us? In yes. yes. She would do it in a heart. Like, oh, what else can I put on my checklist? <laughs> yes. Right, right? now, now, <laughs> now she's going to be like part of the corporate structure and like giving direction. No, don't do this. This is how humans act. Don't do that. Oh my God. That's the thing about it is like, you know, we talk about it. There's still so many stories that there could be happening. It's crazy. All these characters are so, so fully formed and you just love seeing them together. Like when Tamara and I were together, when we had our first, uh, first thing, we practiced that so many times. I remember when we were in episode four when we're meeting in the lab and we're like, who oh are- Oh my God. And like, I was like scooting over, like Rosita was like, okay. And you're like, 
Mm, yeah. I'm very focused on my work. <laughs> we practice in your hotel. We're like, okay, what is this? I remember <laughs> you're struggling pronouncing that one word. What was it? Oh my gosh. And then you just we kept running it a million times. Like, damn it, I can't get that word. I can't get that word. I know because sometimes I just can't get certain words. Yeah, and we, did it, we did it all the in the hotel. And you're like, Tam, no, <laughs> like this. And I'm like, and you're like, no, it's like this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to worry about these things. But yeah, no, it was, uh, it's been fun. It's so, it just reminded me of like when I talked to you about how, how much we were trying to figure out the characters back in the day, because we were both so new to it, the world yeah. and everything. It's a weird world to get into too. Yeah, it's so much to understand. So much to understand. Yeah, and and you know a, a follow up there. So uh, I was talking to Danny yesterday. She mentioned that she would get scripts that were you know sort of that day, but she hadn't known what had happened to her character because she'd been gone so long. So uh, Tamara, like this is a totally new question, but I have to know like how yeah. is it for you kind of being gone and coming back? What's your process for kind of getting back to Rosita when you come back? That's such a good question <laughs> because I had the same issue and I had to ask my team to ask for the scripts from the episodes before mm. because I was like I don't get it I don't know what's going on I don't know what was mentioned and I also really love the show like deeply love the show so for me reading those scripts was like even if I'm not in them or, or, or in them it doesn't matter it was just good to wrap my head around other scenes because when I wasn't working on my scenes I'd love to go and watch these amazing freaking performers and know what's going on um, so that was really important for me to like, uh, get as much, it was hard to get those scripts. I will say <laughs> like, it was really hard. I was like, I just need this, this episode before. <laughs> so I know what's going on. Well, um, we, le we learned that like when in doubt, just ask Tim Rose on, cause he apparently knows everything. Knows everything. <laughs> that like, check, that checks really out. That's very on brand. <laughs> We just ask him, oh, what happened here? And he just remember, because he like cares so much about the Erper universe. He just knows all the facts. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Not that we don't care. He's excessive, okay? He's, he's, he's a fan first who happens to be an actor, it seems <laughs> right. like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So um, you, you need to like do your research and you need to look at pat look at past episodes or past, like just to figure out where you're at. As mm -hmm. a character, I think that's important. Right. You got to know where you've been or what's happening in the show to know where you fit when you show yeah. back up. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, Tamara, there has been some discussion about Rosita and Chantal Riley's characters, Kate, not having chairs in episode 412. I myself was heartbroken over this and I have not yet recovered. Do you think Rosita deserved a chair, still technically being a friend of me of Winona? Why or why not? Yeah, why the hell does Perry get a chair and not Rosita? Come on. Varun, you're really? speaking my language. Perry got a chair. Babies, so. Perry? Perry, um, Perry got the chair. You know, it's very hurtful. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Uh, no, I think it was, oh, first off, I think the idea of how they did it mm -hmm. was so beautiful. Like, I bawled. I was like, this is, this is like so heartwarming. And so it was just magic. It was so magical to even how it, how it looked. I, it, it was, it reminded me of like <laughs> Instagram, like <laughs> it was so picture perfect. Um, but yeah, the, the, I tossle between the two, to be honest, I tossle between like, should she have been invited or shouldn't she? Because yeah, she's redeemed herself. Um, several times <laughs> I will say um but you know I think it was a small wedding maybe it's COVID you, know, you have your excuses <laughs> I don't know <laughs> so everything just blame everything on COVID um, uh yeah I think I think uh it would it would it would have been nice to for Rosita to be there but I can understand she was like on that line, but then again, everyone has like a friend or an aunt or an uncle that doesn't really fit in the wedding, but is still mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I think that's Rosita. So. <laughs> let me ask you, Sean, uh, let me ask you tomorrow. What did you think of, uh, like, what did Rosita do on that rock for like a year? 
Meditate. Hard hitting questions. <laughs> Meditate. Meditate. She went to transcendental meditation and, you know, I don't know. Uh, to be honest, uh, yeah, I think she did a lot of soul searching. I mean, ah. actually, I'm joking. I was joking about all the other stuff, but I really do believe like my decision for that specifically was that she she did do a lot of soul searching. And I think it's important to be, uh, I, and I don't, She's she's been a person that's always been on the go. Like, what can I do next? I can do this. I can learn this. I can get this degree and I can get that degree and I can move. And, and, and people, it, it was like a moment of having to stop and having to reflect and having to, to really look in, inside and, and see where all of her mistakes lied and how, um, how she could do better. So yeah. So oh. meditate. <laughs> Good answer. Thank you, Varun, my, my co-pilot. I appreciate yeah, that. <laughs> uh, all right. So Varun, um, oh, this is, we're taking a turn here. Um, I'm going to give you a multiple choice question. Ooh. All right. I'm going to give you four buddy cop movies. Okay. I'd like you to choose which one you'd pick for your character, Jeremy and Doc Holliday to star in a remake of, and tell me why. Oh, okay. You ready? Okay. Bad boys, hot fuzz, Lethal Weapon or The Heat? Man, Lethal Weapon and Bad Boys have a lot of, you know, Lethal Weapon because obviously there's the old cop, young cop yeah. dynamic. Yeah. I mean, it, it works with, with Doc. Reality. He's like a hundred something years old. I'm too old for this. <laughs> but, then, but then picturing Jeremy be the Mel Gibson character is so bold. It's like, it's not, does not oh. fit that, which would be hilarious. You need to work on a mullet like stat. <laughs> yes. But bad boys, because maybe it's super action packed and funny. I don't know. I think lethal weapon. I think that's the, that's the play right there. Lethal weapon. Great yeah, answer. Like, uh, yeah. He's the, it's a Danny Glover. He's the Danny Glover character for sure. Doc Holliday jaded over it. And he has this young, real nerdy cop as by his yeah. side. Yeah. You can be a different archetype than, than Mel Gibson. You could totally be like, so. you know, super nerdy, you know, keep dropping your, your gun. And I just want to see Doc Holliday constantly say, I'm too old for this shit. Yes, right. <laughs> oh, maybe maybe you can get Tim really to is. do that for us, please. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> I want a spinoff so bad. Oh, that'd be so cool. I, I'm Hope Springs Eternal. We All right. It. Similar question for Tamara. Just a little different because we've already talked about my love for Rosita. And by extension, my love for Winzita. So, um... For your for your multiple choice, it's going to be what romantic pairing would you pick for your character Rosita and Winona to star in a remake of? And let me know why. Your options are Ten Things I Hate About You, Pride and Prejudice, Overboard, and I did not pick this one. Bound. Bound. Oh my god. Um I feel like their characters are so different than the genre that I'm going to pick, which makes <laughs> it so cool. I would do 10 things I hate about you. Nice. Oh. I would do 10 things I hate about you for sure. There's love such it. a love hate relationship between them. And would you be Kat? Or would you be uh, Patrick? Who would you be? Ooh, I don't I feel uh, like you're like the smooth player. I think yeah. you, you kind of need to be Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. I would say Patrick. Yeah. 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 Winona hates everybody and everything. So that, that, she that checks out like, yeah, besides your sister. Yeah. Yeah. And sister, sister. Yeah, totally. The <laughs> Bianca, we've made it. We've made it. Take my money. <laughs> let's go make the thing. Yeah, let's do it. I think, I think we need to call some people up and get it. I, 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 I don't know anybody. You know, the people. <laughs> <laughs> everything happened. Uh, I mean, we'll crowdfund it. Everything we, <laughs> the Erpers are the army that will, will help Seriously, facilitate. Tomorrow there's going to be a massive billboard of 10 things I hate about you with me and <laughs> with Rosita and Winona in New York, right on oh Times Square. God. Like it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's definitely like going to be some photoshopping on Twitter, I fear. <laughs> I can't wait to see this photoshopping on Twitter of these. Oh, pictures. please. Somebody with skills uh, looking at you, Pearl. Uh, <laughs> make it happen for me, sweetheart. Okay. All right. So my next questions are for both of you. 
Uh, a common theme I'm hearing from the cast is that they don't necessarily know at the beginning of their arcs the motivations and the minutiae of their characters. Is there something you remember described about your character as an essential piece or tenant of who they are that has remained true all the way through the show? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Emily always said that, you know, Jeremy's super ethical and like he has like strong morals and that's always like resonated with me. Like she's, that's the, that's kind of the firm point she always kept making throughout even season two, three, four. Like that's, that's always the part she would always write back to is like, he doesn't really, like even when Rosita was being used as an experiment, you know, mm -hmm. like to, to get the cure, like that's against his code. And that's when yeah. he finally will speak up. Mm -hmm. So that's always what I kept in mind. That was my North Star with the guy of like, he, he really believes in like good and evil and like being that you should make the good choice, even if it's disagreeable, even per protecting dolls a secret. Like these are things that there are lines he has, you know, he's not all people pleasing or afraid of like uh, disappointing others if it means that it's for the greater good. So mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think that's, that was always a big thing with Jeremy for me. Like he knows what the right thing is and he tries to do it. Except when he tries to poison his boss. I don't know. Sometimes he lapses. Yeah, lapses. I think, <laughs> I think uh, Rosita has a lot to learn with regards to that is like the morals and the line crossing. <laughs> you know? Other side like, of the fence, perhaps. Just, just like, oh, is that right or is that wrong? I don't know. Let me ask Jeremy. He'll, he'll tell, he'll point me in the right direction because I feel like she struggles a lot with that. She's jaded. She's been jaded uh, when it comes to that. So that's, yeah, like that's really- She's a survivor though. She that's got that exact, survivor that's, that was the word I was going to use. I was going to use survivor through and through. That's That was my through line through everything that I did with her is, is she's always been in, and I think so many people can relate to this is like you're in survival mode. And when do you ever come out of survival mode if there's constantly things being thrown at you? So it's uh, that was my my kind of north star, I guess you could say, um, is is being able to justify her actions <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So like all all the major characters are like some representation of these kind of things, you know. Like Jeremy mm -hmm. is morality and like Rosita is survival. And you know, mm -hmm. like there, there is this, like our characters are kind of designed to be these archetypes of what a person will act through, through this lens. And so it's mm -hmm. like, you know, it's kind of, it's really fun to watch these characters grow within that sphere and grow out of it too. And that's the thing that's so great about the show, right? The characters are the characters and, you know, the plot or whatever orbits around that. But yeah. it, without those foundational solid characters that grow and learn and in and, and ways that are understandable and relatable, um, it, the show wouldn't work. So you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, so this next question is from Twitter uh, for the both of you. Uh, Lisa Caitlin uh, from Twitter does not have an actual question. Uh, but she would like me to convey that she loves you both very, very much. Uh, what's it like to know that for the rest of your careers, you will have thousands of people collectively supporting every single thing you do? You're both part of the Erper Found family now forever. It's hard to comprehend. I, I actually, yeah, I, I don't think about it. To me, I, I, don't, I try not to think about it because it, it gives me anxiety. <laughs> I know. It does. It does. Disappoint it people. It's a lot of pressure. Oh. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. I don't know what <laughs> but I mean, if if evidence of anything, it's like literally the nicest Beautiful. community. It on is. The planet. It's no, great. It, it's great that there's no there's uh, there's not a lot of criticism. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of like I had. Uh, I don't look at my DMs on anything. <laughs> uh, I'm just. I just don't. And then a friend of mine grabbed my phone and was like, oh, let me look at your DMs. And she's like, oh, you have the nicest fans. <laughs> How is this even possible? And, like, <laughs> and then it's just like, I'm like, oh my God, I should like read those. <laughs> read those. It makes yeah. me, like, I just, yeah. So I think, uh, I think I'm going to make more of a point to read them because they are so wonderful and there's no, there's no, I mean, there's other fandoms that are different, but like mm. this one is so phenomenal. So phenomenal. So yeah. 
Can you really imagine you like, you know, having not the greatest day, things are going right, you spilled your coffee, you know, um, like the Friends theme song <laughs> starts, right? And then looking on social media and seeing somebody posting about how much they love you in this scene or some new erper recently discovering the show, commenting, like those are the kind of things that, you know, I think would just be very uplifting. Jeremy, um, do you have when you have a bad day? Jeremy. <laughs> Sorry? Maroon, do yeah. you do that when you have a bad day? No. I mean, the thing is, I'm like, so so human I mean Emily and I relate to this I'm always actively looking for the negative thing and I never oh. see it in the community so it's like uh, you know it's it, I so I love the appreciate but I've always had this little imposter syndrome of like is it am I good enough is this working mm -hmm. blah, blah. Mm -hmm. that it's like when I I have to like really let myself absorb positive affirmations about my yeah. work that's it's a why tough thing as an actor, it's really, or as an artist in general, it's like you don't believe it sometimes that you're doing a good job, but the Herper community makes me feel that way. You are, you both are. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> so speaking of imposter syndrome, Varun, um, yeah. you've had a bit of a face evolution yourself. Um, you know, baby face Jeremy, dog stash Jeremy, and now look at the facial hair. You're like, you're rocking the full beard. Do you have a preference? I wanted it for 4B so badly, but then we had like a flashback thing yeah. because we thought we were going to get Justin still. There was going to be a flashback onto the train when I was describing my monologue. Mm -hmm. And so I shaved it and then they're like, oh, we can't get Justin. I'm like, oh my oh. God, so why did I shave? I wish Jeremy his boldness. That's why <laughs> we get a season five, Jeremy with the beard. That's what's happening. Oh, yeah. That's I'm what here I for it. I love it. I'm here I mean, it'll be, it'll be, I mean, that's the authoritative like thing. It would totally check out for you. You're like, I, I need to be a deputy, you know, chief. That means yeah. a beard. Let me have some authority. Yeah. I'm all about it. changing my image. Like, I love it. <laughs> I'm all about it. As an actor, like even I was just doing like a one scene role in this movie and it's like a drug addict. And I was like, okay, uh, I'm going to go shave my head. And my agent is like, what are you doing? This is one scene. They're not paying you enough to do that and I'm like ah, I don't care and then I shaved it and any, I, any excuse oh. right <laughs> I, any excuse to be a different person is fun for me like I have no preservation that's why I was willing to wear Tim Rose on stash in public it was adorable and horrifying <laughs> everyone thought we were drug dealers also I had a flip phone at the time so they were oh, convinced no. we were drug dealers <laughs> <laughs> it was not not a good look not a good oh wait like strolling around didsbury looking like you're dealing well we go like, in calgary and then we just get breakfast every day and they're like is this a bit like why do these two have <laughs> these mustaches <laughs> like these biker must especially on me it's so uncharacteristic tim pulls it off well yes 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 he does uh his his mustache is essentially a different character at this point uh, wholly separate when he changes yeah. his mustache mustache off we're all so uncomfortable like danny most of all it's like <laughs> what are you doing this is not right well it took me forever to even like recognize him um from Shit's creek because i watched Shit's creek after i had watched winona and i'm like this guy looks super familiar and his voice sounds really familiar and when i figured it out i needed like a day to process it it's not okay <laughs> he looks so different. <laughs> so yeah. different uh, all right. I love, um, I love that you can like, like, do you feel, I just have a question for you. Do you feel mm -hmm. physical, do you feel different in your everyday life when you do a trans, like when you do grow out your beard or when you do shave your he head, do you feel it for days on end or do you just like, is it for the role? Like, how do you, yeah, yeah how do you lead into your everyday? Yeah, it definitely made me more confident when I shaved my head actually. But yeah. it dissipates almost immediately as it comes. Like, it's so, I'm already bored. You know what I mean? Like, I want something new. Like, I, now I need to dye my hair or something. Like, I just want, I love the newness. I love trying to become something else. The novelty, it lasts for a bit and then it goes away. Like Although up. everyone makes fun of me for when I shave because they think I look like a baby. Like I let them like, I want to look my age. So that's, that's the only thing when I shave, I feel a bit self-conscious. Oh, at one point that'll change and you'll wish you, you had the baby back. Cause it, I know. It, it's 31 year old. Like that. That no, that's why. <laughs> All right, y'all. I think we got to leave it there. Um, I'd like to thank you both for participating, not just today with me, but all weekend with the Erpers. We love you. We're so happy to see you in the one-on-ones and the gaming calls. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Natalie, our ASL interpreter. Thank you so much, Natalie. You're amazing. Thank and you. uh, I hope everybody enjoys more Earp Curse Con to come. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye.